Every now and then, someone will ask us how small of a feature could you machine on a desktop CNC. We usually conservatively tell people to expect about 5 thou of precision on the Shapeoko and about 3 thou on the Nomad. That's about 0.127 and 0.076 millimeters respectively for you metric folks. The real answer is a little more complicated to get to, but those are the ballpark figures that we give people. So what does that mean practically? A little while back, we had someone ask if our PCB engraver could legibly trace text that was about 3 millimeters tall. That's roughly an eighth of an inch for you freedom-loving folks. That seems kinda small, right? And, well, that was actually a really easy test to do on our Nomad. More recently, though, we got a much more interesting question. Could we pocket letters that were 0.05 inches tall and at least 0.01 inches deep? This posed a unique problem because in order to create legible text, we needed an end mill that was several times smaller than the size of the feature to be machined. And the smallest end mill we have in stock is a 1 32nd inch end mill, which is very nearly as large as the letters we wanted to machine. So I had to go online to order something smaller, much smaller. I ended up purchasing a series of end mills of decreasing diameter. I'd start my tests with a 15 thou end mill, if that succeeded I'd try a 10 thou end mill, and if that somehow worked I'd try a 7 thou end mill. That's less than 0.2 millimeters in diameter. That is as small as I dared go because I knew the end mill would have to first survive tool length probing, and even then I wasn't entirely confident that I would get past that point. I created some sample text in Fusion 360, and when exporting my toolpaths, which were just basic 2D pocketing operations with no stock to leave, I made sure to set my tolerance an order of magnitude finer than usual. The material I would be machining was graphite. One of the most common uses for this stuff industrially is for sinker EDM electrodes, EDM being electrical discharge machining. The sinker EDM process works by eroding metal away with electrical arcs. Those arcs are delivered by specially shaped electrodes that vaporize the material in closest proximity to itself until your metallic stock has been eaten away to form the perfect negative shape to the electrode's positive profile. It's a mechanically low stress way of forming complex shapes like mold cavities or sharp internal corners that would be difficult or even impossible to directly machine with an end mill. So machining text or other tiny features into a block of graphite is a fairly realistic and common use case at least in the world of CNC's that cost orders of magnitude more than a Nomad. Not that it would stop me from trying. It would also be the perfect test case for the Nomad since graphite is a very forgiving material to machine. Graphite behaves very similar to wrench shape. It machines very easily, sort of crumbling away instantly without any fracture propagation into the remainder of the stock. The areas you intend to cut will be cut, and nothing else will break off. You can machine extremely fine features without stressing your end mill. For the first test, with the 15 thou end mill, I used the following speeds and feeds. 10,000 RPM, 7 inches per minute, a 15 thou depth of cut, and a 7.5 thou step over. That's nominally 7.5 thou, mind you, since we know the first moves in a 2D pocketing operation are usually full width of cut contours. In order to make sure no graphite got airborne and migrated to any of the sensitive electrical components in the Nomad, I had a vacuum hose in close proximity to the action. This toolpath completed quite easily and left letters that were somewhat legible but not pretty by any means. Next up was the 10 thou end mill. 10 thousand RPM, 6 inches per minute, 10 thou depth of cut, 5 thou step over. The speeds and feeds I'm using are by no means the fastest you could go, but since these tiny end mills average about $20 a pop, I wasn't eager to find their limits. These letters were much better defined than the previous test and I would have been quite happy to call it a day at this point but I had one more end mill at my disposal and the word of the day was YOLO. So I loaded up the 7 thou end mill as carefully as possible, making sure I didn't drop it accidentally while tightening the ER collet and holding my breath as it touched off on the tool probe. And with that milestone passed, we can finally relax and oh gosh darn it, it's going to probe again. Speeds and feeds here are as follows. 10 thousand RPM, 5 inches per minute, 7 thou depth of cut, 3.5 thou step over. Notice the pattern here? I usually like to maintain certain ratios of step down to step over when I'm in uncharted territory. It helps reduce the number of free variables when trying to come up with speeds and feeds. This toolpath also finished successfully, and as far as I could tell, the features were perfect, but my naked eye was woefully inadequate for properly assessing my test letters. I needed a microscope. So downstairs, I looked at each of the test cuts, and I honestly surprised myself. I didn't know that graphite could retain such tiny features, I didn't know the Nomad had the resolution to draw smooth looking curves at this scale, and I certainly didn't expect the letters to look this good. The smallest increment on the machinist ruler in the picture is half a millimeter. Some of the lines in the text are approaching the thickness of a sheet of paper. 
So the short answer to that relatively simple question is yes, the Nomad has the resolution to draw out legible text of about a millimeter in height. Not only that, the ER Collet system is of sufficiently low runout that microscopic end mills will survive light cuts like this. I hope you guys found this experiment interesting, good luck, and have fun machining your own projects, folks.